This might be the craziest mechanical game that I've ever designed, and today I'm going to teach you exactly how you can build one. It's called Gravity Grab and uses a hidden scissor lift mechanism attached to a magnet underneath to control a spaceman on the top playing surface. Your mission is to guide him back to Earth away from the two aliens at the bottom while avoiding obstacles in space. If you happen to hit one, you may get knocked off course and have to start all over. Now this project is designed for laser engravers, which brings us to today's sponsor, We Create. I'll be using their new Vision Pro 45 watt diode laser to cut out all of the components. And that reminds me, if you do want to make this yourself using the plans available in the video description, you will need a laser that's able to cut at least quarter inch stock and has a bed size of at least 19 and a half inches by 12 inches. Combine that with the use of some simple woodworking tools like a table saw and drill, this project really is not that complicated. But all that being said, let me show you how to make it. Starting with the rear panel that the scissor mechanism will actually ride on, I'm going to take this piece of basswood and try to center it on my laser bed. Because the bed itself is larger than the area the laser can actually engrave, I have to slowly nudge the piece toward the center using the built-in camera system and we create software, we create make it. After refreshing my camera to show where my workpiece is actually resting on my machine, I can import my SVG file, adjust that down to size, and then do some more fine tuning to make sure that my workpiece is actually in the center of the work area. Now because I am pushing the limits of the size capabilities here, I do have to be kind of exact, go back a few times pushing this back and forth, but once that's lined up, I can finally start assigning the job settings. In this component's case, it's pretty simple. I'm just cutting out the three holes that you see using a line engrave function for the directional arrows and then cutting out the actual perimeter of the component to make sure everything is the exact correct dimensions. I think this job took about three to four minutes and yes, I do know that there is some blue stuff on top of my workpiece and I promise I will explain what that is in just a minute. But for now, we can take this component out of the machine and set it to the side before moving on to the main playing surface of this game, where all the action is really going to take place. So here I am prepping that component, which is the same exact material as the first one, and I'm putting more of that blue stuff on, which is actually Aura Mask. What this stuff is, is a masking that should help with painting later on, and I only say should because I'm recording this after the fact, and I already know that I made some small mistakes, but you'll see that in a bit. In terms of lining everything up on the machine, the process for this one is the exact as the first because they are the same size, we just have a bit more engraving to do. The reason I have masking on both sides is because the main character of our game is the same thickness as this component, so I figured I'd may as well save some material and cut him out at the same time. After about six minutes, I believe, we can take the pieces off the machine, make sure everything looks good, and move on to the next stage, which is painting and staining. I'm gonna leave the spaceman aside for now and just work on the two larger components, but this is actually where I realized my first mistake. The power settings on my laser must have been slightly too low, and as a result of that, it didn't cut all the way through my aura mask. What that means is when I try to remove specific areas, it might peel up poorly and ruin the piece. I think I can fix that with an X-Acto blade, so I'll just take some time and kind of make sure my edges are cut all the way through before I start painting them. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Once the ore mask is removed from the correct areas, I can take some black unicorn spit wood stain, mix it with some water, and start covering the main playing surface. Now I am making sure to stay above the designated engraved line on the bottom near that large opening because that's the only part that I want to be black. And if you're wondering why I'm painting over all of those space objects, it's because those are location pins for later on when I start gluing the pieces over the top of them. That'll probably make more sense later on, but for now let's move on to painting the directional arrows using black acrylic paint instead of the wood stain. Nothing very difficult about this one, just paint the whole thing, let it dry, and come back to remove all the ore mask to reveal the final image. Because we use that masking, it does make it a bit easier to get clean lines, and I think it looks pretty good. The main playing surface is a bit more complicated since we do have to do some more painting with blue and green after removing only a section of the ore mask, but once that's completely dry, we can come back and remove the border and reveal what I think is actually a pretty sharp looking planet Earth. Yeah, that's pretty satisfying. 
From there, it's just a matter of finishing these two pieces with your varnish of choice. I like to use spray lacquer, and now we can set them aside to get ready to start working on the main box frame of our game. And I do not want you to be intimidated here, but you will need to do some quote unquote traditional woodworking with a table saw and drill. Trust me, I promise it's not difficult. What I'm doing here is working with some walnut since I felt like being fancy and breaking it down to the top, bottom, and sides of our box. Now this is totally optional, but if I hold my normal blade up on edge, you can see that the cutting surface is slightly angled in, which means that the bottom surface it cuts will not be flat. In order to fix that, I'm going to use my dado stack, which does have a flat bottom, and cut grooves about half an inch in on each side at about eighth inch depth. Now I measured that depth using our components from earlier just to get a rough estimate. Hopefully I haven't lost you yet, and once you're finished, you have four sides to the box with two identical grooves in each that are wide enough to accept the components from earlier. Should look like this. Next, we need to take the two long sides of our box and drill three holes on each end to accept screws later on that will hold the box together before sanding and finishing. And yes, I also added my logo on one of the sides using the laser. But after all of that is said and done, we can actually start assembling this with the two components that we made in the beginning of the video. And I apologize if I'm moving a little too quickly for some of you, but if you do check the link that I mentioned earlier in the video description, you can read the full build plans for this, which also include assembly uh, down on my website. So yeah, check that out. Okay, so what you see me doing here is using some corner clamps, which are extremely useful to assemble the top portion of the box and then secure it together using some screws. The reason I'm only assembling the top is so once it's finished, I can slide the rear panel into place and then get to work on securing some French cleats so I can eventually hang this on the wall. The French cleats get installed before securing the main playing surface because I need to access those two screw holes that I made using the laser. But once that's secured, I can flip the piece over and insert our main playing surface into the second groove on our box sides, and then finally complete the box, again using the corner clamps for assistance, and securing it down with screws. And with all that finished, we're left with what I think is a pretty good looking box, and also one that already hangs on the wall thanks to the French cleat. I'm not going to lie, so far this project is turning out way nicer than I anticipated, which is awesome, uh, but we are not done yet, so we need to go back to the laser now to finish cutting the rest of our components. This is what all of our next pieces should look like once they're all cut and finished, but before that, they'll look more like this. The preparation for these two components is pretty simple. I'm just going to paint one side of them yellow for where the stars will eventually be cut out. And then I'll also put that ore mask back on, this time making sure to actually cut all the way through it when I use the laser. In terms of lining everything up on the machine, there's nothing complicated about it since these are both well within the cutting surface. So it's just a matter of assigning my job settings with line engraves and cut paths and uh, pressing go. I want to say this job took about 25 minutes, and that's because it does go fast during the line engrave process, but we are cutting out a lot more material, and because this is quarter inch stock, uh, it needs to go kind of slow for that. But after it's all said and done, it came out as it should have. Just make sure you're picking up all the pieces in case they happen to fall through the laser bed because they are kind of tiny. Uh, but with that finished, we can move into my workshop and start assembling the coolest part of this project, at least in my opinion, the scissor lift mechanism. So with everything on the bench, including our spaceman from before, I separated the lift mechanism components, removed the ore mask from them, and then kind of did a dry assembly of how it should look once it's all finished. The reason I'm doing this now is so I can figure out which of the components are going to be dragging on the bottom, so I can then take a countersink bit, drill some holes, so the screws that I'm going to insert will be flush with the bottom, instead of protruding and adding more friction. I'm not gonna lie, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to get the least amount of friction as possible on this, since that's really the only thing that could hinder the gameplay. Uh, but I'll explain that a little bit more once I assemble this. When it does come to assembly, make sure you're putting a washer in between each arm of the mechanism and tightening the screws just enough to allow some free play so the mechanism can actually move around as it should. All of the joints, with the exception of the two closest to where your hands will be in the center, uh, get assembled basically the same way. The one at the bottom will have a joystick, which is essentially just a dowel that I drilled a hole through and painted red, and the one above that will have a larger screw that actually attaches to our game board. 
Once put together and adjusted correctly, it should look something like this. This is what I was talking about earlier in terms of trying to lower the friction. This stuff is called UHMW tape, and that stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight. Essentially, it's just a low friction plastic that they used for things that have to slide against each other, uh, which in my case is the perfect solution, I think. So all I'm doing is putting a piece on the bottom that will slide on the surface, and that actually doubles as a way to hold our screws in place, uh, and then just trimming it down with a blade. After all said and done, it seems to work pretty good, and you'll never know the difference when you're looking at this from the top side, so yeah, I think that's a good solution. The last thing we need to do before moving on is glue this small circle that we cut out to the very tip of the mechanism, which is where the magnet will later be glued once we finally paint everything which, I'm not gonna lie, is probably the most time-consuming part of this entire project. So, let's quickly go over that, I guess. Now, because the colors you choose are completely up to you, I don't want to spend too much time going over that, but I will show you how well the aura mask worked, uh, specifically on this spaceship. Before I realized I could use aura mask on the laser, my original plan was to actually use Sharpie to color the spaceship, and I actually did use Sharpie on some of the planets, as you'll see in a second. Uh, but when it comes to this spaceship, I didn't think it would be vibrant enough, so I decided to use acrylic paint. I am by no means a good painter, so if I didn't have this masking on there, it would have just looked horrible. Uh, but this kind of makes it dummy proof. I mean, it took a long time since I had to do it in sections and let it dry uh, for a few hours before I could come back. But once all said and done, I mean, this one looks pretty sharp. To finish it off, I did need to glue a tiny piece to the bottom, which comes into play at the very end of assembly, uh, but then I moved on to the really, really tiny pieces like our spaceman and planets. And by the way, the title plaque or mask also worked very well, which is just a nice bonus. Anyway, if you remember from the beginning of the video, the ore mask on our spaceman didn't cut all the way through, so I did have to painstakingly attack him with a knife, uh, but in the end it ended up working out and I was able to paint him somewhat successfully, I think. And for the smaller parts that I couldn't reach on him, I did just use a sharpie uh, and then continued that into the planets because it was just a lot easier to use the sharpie than it was to paint these. And in the end, no one's really going to know the difference, so don't judge me too much. And as you watch me go through the final coloring stages in this project, if you are still here watching, I just want to say thank you so much for sticking around. I really, really appreciate the support. These projects and videos take me a very long time to make, and this is by no means my full-time gig. Uh, so if you want to help drive the algorithm even further, hit the like button, give me a subscribe, or even leave a comment. Anyway, let's get back to finally assembling this thing, starting with the magnets. So right out of the box, make sure that you have the polarity of your magnets correct when you start to glue them. It would really be unfortunate to get this backwards and then basically repel your spaceman off the board. That is not what you want. Once I had mine glued in place, I did decide to use more of that low friction tape in between them since, well, it can't hurt. But with that finished, I can finally take the scissor mechanism and install it into the rear panel of our board using the hole that we laser engraved in the very first component that we made. Again, like all the other pivots on this arm, make sure that it's tight enough not to wiggle everywhere, but also loose enough where it can still maneuver correctly. That seems to work and we can now glue the spaceship in place, making sure to line up the hole in the bottom with the large screw that we just installed on the scissor mechanism. This just makes sure that the screw can't pivot around too much since it's locked in place on both sides. Up next we can continue gluing, starting with the title plate which should slide right into the top, and then moving on to the stars and planets which get aligned using the engraved marks that we put onto the main playing surface much much earlier in the video. I think I mentioned that when I was standing it and I told you I would bring it back up, well this is where it comes into play. Alright, we are finally at the finish line here. The last step is to put the clear acrylic cover on. Uh, we just need to drill some holes on this using the pre-engraved lines on the title plate and space shift. I think I drilled quarter inch holes here. Uh, no big deal, just screw it in place and we can finally hang this on the wall and start playing. 
As you watch me play this game, I just want to say thank you so much again for joining me in this video. This is a one-of-a-kind game at the moment, but if you decide to build one, I guess it'll be two-of-a-kind. Uh, so again, if you have a laser that is capable of doing what I just did, check out the video description and you'll find the full plans. See you next time.